Good evening and welcome to Police TV. You call me on Hollyhock Watch. Now these particular beauties are coming on fine and dandy, are they not? But for many years after the, uh, the police was rebuilt after the fire, we didn't have any Hollyhocks along here because all the little potential growth holes uh, just were all filled up with cement and so forth. So uh, we drilled some new holes and after a number of false starts, the hollyhock started to come. And this year, because sadly we haven't got any customers brushing by, they're doing a tremendous job here, along with all the other hollyhocks in the garden. So, jolly hollyhocks, that's what I say. Now anyway, I'm feeling a bit green tonight myself because of tomorrow night's asparagus auction that we're going to be doing on Zoom and Facebook Live. You can find the uh, link to the, the Zoom link uh, through our website uh, or uh, through the Facebook event that's been put up. Um, please come along and have a beard and have a, a watch of what's going to be a great show. We've got uh, some great music and some other bits and bobs in there for, for you. Um, but um, a little earlier uh, I spoke with someone who knows a little bit about the mysteries asparagus. Good afternoon and uh, today I am joined by my good friend Jemima Packington who many of you will know as the the asparamancer. Hi, hi Jemima, good to see you. Good to see Hello, you. Darling, the world's only asparamancer, that's me. Yeah, the world's only indeed. Yep. Um, I can see, oh you've got a lovely picture there behind you. Oh, that's a, a, a watercolour by um, a very famous, now deceased bath artist called Jasper Rose. Oh. And he gifted it to me, which I thought was so sweet because he knew all about the asparagus connection. Ah, very nice, very nice. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, now you've been a bit busy, haven't you? You've been uh, um, a bit sort of transcontinental or something? Oh, oh yeah, well, you know, everything, it's like buses. You wait forever and then everything comes together. So I was asked to do a radio interview on Wednesday, just gone, uh, with Chicago. Um, oh. It's a nighttime uh, program. So I was on at two o'clock their time in the morning. Uh, and we had a chat with Nick. Uh, Jilla la 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 la, sorry, I mispronounced his name. But the presenter, that was really good. And then yesterday, I had uh, an interview on uh, primetime breakfast Connecticut radio with AJ and Chaz. It sounds a bit like Chaz and Dave, really, doesn't it? But so, and they they took the wee wee about my accent. Really? Again, well, they... and brown cow, and they they played royal music in the background. So I didn't care. It was hilarious. <laughs> Like they know how to talk, eh? yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you've joined us because I was just we're doing as you as you know we are doing our um, auction tomorrow evening. Yes. Um, the, the, the the auction occurs here every year at the fleece, and we're doing it virtually via uh, Zoom and uh, Facebook Live. And I, 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 um, I just wonder whether you could give me any uh, help with maybe how much we might make or any any other predictions you might have that might be useful for private to, to Well, have you, have you got any grass to, to count? I am primed, I am primed with oh, any grass. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, um, you do that and let me see what I can predict for yeah. you. Oh, and on one's full enough on its own, does that mean anything? Oh, that, that <laughs> means money coming in. Oh, there it goes, hang on. Oh, look at that, that's loads of dosh. <laughs> that's absolute. That's in the thousands. You reckon? Yeah, that's um, in the thousands. That would be that would be amazing if we could make that sort of money. Because I, I know well, the thing is, as they've all been saying, with lockdown, and we've all been stuck at home, and we haven't been spending as much money as we normally do, travel, countries, whatever. So people have got more money. So come on, guys. Put your hands in your pockets and bid. <laughs> Can't fault you for saying that. Ryan, thank how many you. Rounds, how many rounds are you auctioning? Well, we're not many. We're going to do the hundred, you know, the, yes. the big one. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. probably just maybe a, a three or four of the others just because 
you know, I think that will probably be fine. So they're going to have to be quick to get a yes. bid in. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. sure they will. I'm sure they will. And I yeah. do predict that it's going to bring in lots of money, which is which is what we need. Yeah, indeed. Who is it for this year? Well, it's uh, it's normally for the silver band, but they they've decided that they don't want to. Uh, uh, they're not raising money this year because they think there are other, you know, they want to yes. make sure people give to other other things. Yeah. So Just we've um, we've chosen um, a, a caring hands they're called in in Evesham, which is a an organisation which runs a food bank and you know oh, help fabulous. people yep. in need of, of food, which I think Lots you know at the moment is really important. So, oh, yeah, so that's a fabulous, fabulous course. So come on, guys, dig deep. That's, <laughs> what, we that's what we need. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll see you at the auction as well tomorrow. So, oh, fingers can't crossed. Wait. Can't wait for that. Good. And, good. Uh, take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Jemima, and uh, look forward to seeing whether she gets her hand in her pocket herself tomorrow. We'll see. Now, this little picture here is on the wall in the Baru house. And it's from the days of uh, when Albert Parker was the landlord. Um, and uh, technical director making adjustments, you can see it. And features a Mr. Haynes on his bicycle there. Um, and uh, something we encourage here at Fleece in cycling. Um, but uh, yes, he, he uh, a lovely story I got told by Nina Lippitt when we were doing a research for our uh, book, um, that when she was a, a young girl, uh, she used to be walking along and she would see um, a Mr. Haynes, not this one, but another Mr. Haynes, a, a relative of this particular Mr. Haynes, who was pushing his bicycle along with a flat tyre. And uh, she offered to mend his tyre for him so that his bicycle, he could get back on his bicycle. This was every day and he said, he told her in the end, he said to her now, he said, uh, basically, he said, uh, it would go too fast for me if the tyres were pumped away I had to sit on it. The main reason being that he was full of cider every day and therefore couldn't actually get on the thing. That doesn't stop some of us from getting on a bicycle and falling into a ditch. You know who you are. Um, there you go. So that's uh, another little uh, photo. Um, uh, niblet of fleetiness for you. Um, now, my daughter very kindly um, sent me a picture of her favourite cow calf um, from over in uh, the Inkra uh, area and uh, thanks Mads and uh, you can see it's got that heart on its forehead isn't it lovely and uh, it's um, you know it obviously is a fan and supporter of the NHS and other key work workers so thank you to the calf for being with us um, and also she sent a photograph a little video of her um, Sunflower that is uh, struggling in today's winds. So, before we go a lot further, it's time for Julian's joke. Again, have you ever wondered why it's always the little guy that gets picked out at the police ID parade? Well, it's because he's a little suspect. Where does he get it from? Um, so, um, we talked um, earlier about the auction tomorrow, and I thought it was uh, important to try and get a little bit of the history. So, what I did uh, the other day, I spent some time talking with my good old friend and uh, erstwhile drinking companion here at the Fleece, um, uh, Mr. Chris Hemming. Uh, now, unfortunately, because of some problems with the video um, recording, we've not got any footage of Chris himself so we put in some nice coverage of some nice photographs and bits and bobs of uh, the asparagus auction and asparagus generally and the band but uh, we're going to finish the show on that in just a second but i'm just going to give you a little tunette before we go the other way around. as far as I've got with that, so I'll stop while I'm ahead. Uh, but we're going to uh, leave you with uh, this interview with Chris. So good night from me from Police TV.
everyone, and uh, I'm joined tonight uh, by Chris Hemming, who is the chair. Are you the chair of Repton Silver Band? Is that right, Chris? Well, in my day, I was the chairman. <laughs> the chairman. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm the chairperson. Chairpersonage, yeah. indeed. <laughs> and you, um, uh, thanks for joining us, Chris, because uh, we've obviously got the um, the uh, traditional auction Sunday coming up, which we're going to chat about in a minute. But you've been involved with the uh, auction for many, many years, haven't you? Do you want to do you want to tell us a bit about that and uh, how it came to be and that sort of thing? Yeah, well, I could tell you that um, without getting access to the records, um, I've been on the committee for oh 40 odd years i've been chairman for 38 years um the, the origin of the brass uh, the grass auction uh, started as raffle um the vale of evesham asparagus show was always traditionally held at the royal oak in badsey which is oh yeah of course if you look at the bus time timetable from redditch it's still called the royal oak uh, bus stop, but it's now changed the round of grass. But that's where they had the shows. Um, that finished in, I think it was either the late 60s or the 1970 or 1971 because of the decline of market gardening and growing asparagus. But the, the, the market gardeners used to like to show their asparagus off and they'd put their really best buds and do them up in willow. Um, oh, yeah. so when that ended, um, we were looking for money to buy a complete set of instruments for the band. So, um, what we did was we organized a uh, raffle of asparagus. We got a chap called Charlie Stanley. Now, the Stanley family is still alive and living in Brexton. There's Ed and Tony. Um, and he, he did us beautiful hundreds of grass. Now, 100 of grass wasn't 100 buds, it was 120. And I, I, I don't know how that is, but I was ex told that it was in an exhibition bundle uh, round, there was 15 buds. So in half a hundred, they would put 60 buds because it was a bit like the um, baker's dozen. A baker's okay. dozen was 13. They didn't want to sell underweight. So 100 of grass was 120 buds just to make sure they were up to the weight. Anyway, um, Charlie Stanley did it for a few years. Um, then he, he got too old to do it. And um, Pete Tompkins, who was a, a euphonium player in our band, he said he could do it with a traditional Willow method. Um, we had several uh, band members at the time who were grown asparagus. There was Eric Thornett from Littleton, George Bird, who, well, we've got Bill Bird now. Um, George is still alive. Hilton Jouse, Des Fowles, uh, Wilf Newman, and Pete Tompkins. Um, but we also used to get the asparagus from other local growers who would actually keep this, grow exceptional large buds, um, because they were used to doing that for the show. Um, they would put them down there well. And if you put it in a really? well, it would actually keep it for, it's like putting it in a fridge. Put it down a well. It was a fridge. So we've got people like Jack Harrison, um, John and Alec Toms at Littleton, Don Alford who was on the Unibourne Road, um, Cocker Toms, and a lot of the band growers did the same. Now, in the late seventies, and it might have been the early eight, uh, early eighties, um, we only used to do a raffle. We didn't do an auction, uh -huh. and we were making quite a bit of money. And then somebody won the big hundred of grass and said, I'll donate that back to the band and you can auction it. And it was like, what? Well, that's great because they won it, but they want to auction it. And so that's how the auction came about. We'd have the raffle and then we had this auction. And this round of, this hundred of grass fetched an, well, an enormous amount of money. Because Robert Harris and Maggie next door used to have a party for all the marketers from Birmingham where they were trading and people were bidding for it. And then eventually we got to, hotels were coming down from the, like the Ligon Arms at Broadway. And it was in the uh, mid eighties that um, we sold a hundred of grass for 1,300 pounds. 
Wow. It was phenomenal. I mean, you, I don't know, 120 buds. Um, it was over £10 a bud. And uh, we, we made a lot of money. But it was also a classic um, village thing. And it kept the Vale of Eversham's asparagus growing alive. I mean, at one time, there was thousands of acres of asparagus growing in Eversham. And then it declined because you've got mass production. I mean, let's face it, you can get asparagus all the year round. And it's flown in from Peru. But um, unfortunately, all these old market gardeners <laughs> died away eventually. Um, but we still managed to carry on. We've had auctioneers from Gordon Kitely, bless him. I mean, he, he was brilliant. He worked at the Littleton and Badsey Growers. Um, then we had Colin Jalfs. And Colin was thinking of retiring soon. I don't know if it was this year or next year. Um, and uh, Joe Chatterton was going to be sort of winkled into auction grass. But we've always had a... We've all had association with the fleece and with Lola. Lola was very um, anxious for us to um, do the, the, the grass draw there. And uh, I might add, Nigel, interesting fact, she used to bring us out enamel jugs of beer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Chris? <laughs> well, oh, that was just a, it was a snide comment, that was. <laughs> No, but um, obviously when she um, died, there was a bit of a problem with the pub and then there was uh, the people that started to keep the licence open, lived in a caravan down the gun. And we did hold the um, auction, um, this would be 1976, was it, or 77 when Lola died? Seven, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, down at the Victoria Arms. And I think Terry and Anne James was in charge of the pub then. And I think one year... It might have been when they were doing a fleece up the first time after Lola had died. I think we did it in the Legion Club. Uh, but it wasn't as successful, but that, that's not a problem. Um, and in the early 80s, somebody bought it, the big 100, for £1,300. Yeah. That was in the 80s. Um, That's pretty we good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we haven't yeah. seen prices like that since, but we've yeah. all seen very good prices. Yeah, and the band has relied on it as a, a as a money spinner. Um, and uh, that's that's going to be different this year, uh, Chris, isn't it? Because you've taken you've ta decided to take a different view about raising funds for the band this year. Do you yeah. want to tell us about that? Yeah, well, I mean, um, if there is any asparagus that gets auctioned, I don't think the band should get the money. It should go to some charity. Um, as a band, we, we've not practised since March. Um, our band room is shut up. We've, we've turned the eating off. The electric isn't getting used. We own the band room, so we're not paying anything out. Um, so hopefully we're looking at me as chairman. I was going to resign this year at our annual general meeting on, in March because um, I, I think it's time for younger people to take over. I'm over 60. Well, I'm over 65. Oh, it doesn't matter how old I am. But I know when I was asked to be chairman, I was very young. And it was because the older people in the band said, we need younger people to take over and mm. raise money. And I think that's what it needs. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to have our general meeting, so I'm still chairman. But, uh, and I'm quite pleased to be. And I'm sure you... It's a difficult time because it yeah. is a difficult time. There's yeah. no way... We can go in that band room for, oh, it'll be months. Yeah. I mean, uh, Brass Band England, we, we are in touch with. Eleanor has um, uh, explained this to me, Eleanor Wood. Um, they, they said if a band played outside somewhere now, if they two metre distanced them, we'd need an area of 45 metres by 35 metres. <laughs> yeah. Well, we wouldn't be able to hear each other, and uh, it, the sound would be terrible. So we've just got to get used to the fact that we've, we've got to get over this and when we're over it, we'll bounce back again. But we're not, we're not craving money. We're not making any money, which we want to because we want to build a new band room. It'll have to be a big band room if we've got to be 45 metres. Um, but um, we're not spending anything. So don't worry about the band. If there's any money to be raised, give it to some of the charities 
uh, the NHS or whatever, you know, there's, there's, apart from the NHS, there's a lot of people that are suffering, uh, mental health problems. It doesn't matter. Okay, Chris. Well, let's, I, I think we'll leave it there if that's all right. I, I really, no, really, no I really appreciate you, you joining us uh, yeah. for that. And uh, we'll right. do our best to raise a few bob for charity. And thanks <laughs> to yourself and to the band for allowing us to continue on that auction night. Um, yeah, well, you do that, um, and I hope you raise some money for somebody. Um, yeah. The thing is, now the band is still here, but we won't be able to get together. There's certainly no problems. I would think we'd be looking, um, hopefully, to do a Christmas concert in the art centre and the church, and never know. Optimistically, we might be able to do a charity concert in the church, maybe. October, November, like we usually do. We usually do one for the um, armistice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We'd be looking looking to do that, but obviously we're not practised, but we keep trying. Um, yeah. I think Paul Wood's going to put out a... Um, we're all going to try and record something for the proms. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I don't know what it is yeah. yet, but we can yeah. put something out on, yeah. on social media yeah, of, of the proms where we'll all record our little bits like they did for Slayburn. And yeah, all. which was super. Really, we'll be we'll be hearing that again on uh, on on the evening at the uh, at the auction. Yeah, uh, along with Paul doing his solo. So. Yeah, yeah. Nigel, you have a very good week and enjoy the bank holiday. A shame we won't be there selling grass and drinking your beer, but <laughs> the band's still going to be about. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. We've left.